Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. Good morning. Um, today we're going to talk about homologous versus analogous structures. Um, and also we're going to throw in this word called vestigial structure or a vestigial organ. Um, we're going to let you guys look that up. We actually, as humans, have a vestigial organ. Um, and I want you to be able to email me at, or Ms. Pay and tell us what it is, okay? After you figure out what a vestigial structure organ is and what we as humans have as a vestigial organ, okay? You're going to be able to compare and contrast homologous versus analogous structures. So remember keyword, root word, or not root word, but prefixes here, homo, and then ana, A-N-A. All right, what is the importance of looking at the embryological structures of different organisms? So when you see that big word, it's a very large word, but you see this, embryo. And embryo, you should think of, you know, um, an organism that is developing in the womb, okay? Or structurally, it could be uh, egg, whatever, but it's developing. All right, so evolution this is going to start to get us into evolution um, you're going to start to be able to see how organisms are similar and how we not everything but how some organisms have evolved from a common ancestor um, and this is just one of my favorite units because it's, it's fun to look at so your notes for today you have uh, the definition of evolution um, and if you talk about evolution using the word evolve, if you've heard something evolves over time, it's just how it's changed over time. Okay, so evolution, um, talking about science, is how life on Earth, as well as the shape of Earth's surface, um, has changed over time. Okay, just think about in your lifetime, um, your cell phone. Mm -hmm. oh, and yes. how cell phones have evolved and changed over time in that short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so that's just kind of what evolution just means. It just means change over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was, uh, I got my first cell phone in eighth grade. But before that, we had cell phones in, that like hooked up to cars inside the car. And they were like in a bag. huge. Yeah, they were like this this big and they were in a bag. It was, you were doing something if you had one of those. And you didn't call people just to talk. You nope. called because it was an emergency and yeah. you only had like 30 minutes. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, biologic evolution. So same thing, we just break these words up. What does it mean to evolve? That means to change over time. And then bio stands for, and you should be able to tell me bio means life. So I literally translate this word into the change of life over time, how life has evolved over time, if you're breaking that word apart, okay? Um, and biologic evolution is what we're going to be studying along with Earth, but it, this accounts for the diversity of species developed through a gradual process of many generations, okay? And so biologic evolution is just how an organism has evolved over the course of um, a very long period of time. Remember, things aren't going to evolve overnight. It's going to take thousands, millions of years, okay? But why do we evolve? We evolve because it increases chances of survival. And remember, at the end of the day, it is our goal to survive and reproduce, okay? So our organism does not go extinct. Right. All right, Ms. Pate. Okay, so whenever you have homologous structures, um, going back to the word homo, it means the same. So if you think about that, you have similar structures in related organisms, but they share a common ancestor. Okay, so some examples are like uh, human arms and cat paws. They're similar structures, and we share the same common ancestor because we're, um, <clears throat> we're both mammals, okay? But um, analogous, so in, oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. So homologous, there you go. You can see that you have the humerus, which is the top bone, and it goes all the way down to the funny bone. Mm -hmm. And in the cat, it has the same thing. 
it has the humerus. And then in a cat, it also has the radius and the ulna, which are your two bones in the smaller part of your arm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the cat also has the same thing. Now we are able to grab stuff with our fingers. We have an opposable thumb, but so do cats. They also have those phalanges, um, which are your fingers as well. I know that, you know, whenever you look at a cat, you roll it probably don't really think about us being genetically similar, but we are. Um, the same thing with whales. If you look at the whale up top, it has the same bone, maybe not the same structure, but the same bone, because um, you see our humerus is a little bit longer than the whales. And then it has the radius and ulna, which are the two smaller bones, and then it has the phalanges, which are like your fingers in a whale. Um, Bone. But what one thing is a similar structure, but it does different functions. Mm -hmm. like we can pick stuff up with our arms, and a whale uses their like flap to swim. So it's the structure is the same. If we would take away everything, like the bone, um, just had the bones, it would be the same structure, but just a different function. Yep. And guys, you can look and you can see that it's got different patterns that match up with each bone. So humerus is the little dots, and then the radius is the lines. The ulna is the clear one. Then you have your carpal, metacarpals, and phalanges. Um, and like Ms. Pate said, when we're talking about homologous structure, it is similar structure, but different functions. Wait, okay, so humans, what do we use our arms for? Think about everything you use your arms for. A bat or a bird, they have literally the same bones, but you don't see me flying around, okay, because I don't use my arm to fly. I would not go very far, right? So similar structure, but completely different function, okay? Um, and then we move to, remember, homo same. Next, we move to analogous structure. So, can you tell me what um, the prefix ANA means? If you can't, I want you to look it up, okay? Analogous structures, similar structures that serve the same purpose, so you're doing the same exact thing, but the organisms are not related at all, okay? Um, and for example, you have a bird wing and an insect wing. A bird, what's it going to do? It's going to fly. Insect wing, mm, you're still going to fly. Some insects can fly, but it's completely different structure. Okay? And that just means that they do not share a common ancestor. So if we look back at homologous structures, the human, and then we have the whale, crocodile, cat, bird, bat, we share way back when some kind of common ancestor because we have all of these similarities okay when you're in an analogous analogous structure you do not share similarities right, right there's no dna um whenever you have homologous structures your dna is a certain per percentage type for mm -hmm. analogous it will be like a zero percentage type whenever you're looking up the comparisons all right, next we have embryological similarities, okay? Um, and this one's super cool to me. So when you think of something being an embryo, it's when it's still developing, um, not before it's born. So before, well, yes, before it is born, but it has not been born yet, it's an embryo. So it's in the developmental stage. Um, and when you look at these, and I'm gonna show you some pictures, it, they, look, they look very similar. Okay, us and a chicken, we look very similar up until a certain age, okay? And that just suggests that we share a common ancestor. Does that mean that I'm half chicken? No. But do we share some of the same DNA from a common ancestor way back when? Probably so, yes, okay? And over time, going back to evolution, biologic evolution and adaptations, why would organisms have to change well, there's changes in structures, behaviors. Um, you have to have certain traits for survival. You have to have better reproductive 
um, success in a particular environment. So those are reasons why you're going to be changing and adapting. So if I pull up embryologic similarities, see which one I want to use. Let's use this one. I want just the picture. Okay. So you can see this is what a chicken embryo would look like, right? Um, and what we can do is we can compare this to what a human embryo would look like or other embryos. I wish that picture, there we go. There it is. Okay. So look here. This is kind of the first stage of development Oop, up top, right? Just we have a fish, a salamander, a tortoise, a chick, a hog, a calf, a rabbit, and a human. So this would be us. If you look up here and I were to give you this, this, just these guys right here, and just these names down here, would you be able to tell the difference between each of these? Like, would you be able to tell that this is a human and this is a fish? No. No, because you see so many similarities, right? And that just suggests that if there is embryological similarities that we come from a common ancestor okay all right so miss pay do you have anything else to add for notes today or is that pretty much it that was pretty much it okay um guys make sure you're sending us your work and then if you look under friday friday you're going to just continue on with this study um you are going to click on this file and you'll be working on this little worksheet right here. It looks like a lot, but it's really not. Um, this will be due next Wednesday. So that'll give you Monday and Tuesday of next week to ask questions if you have questions that you need to ask. Um, but very similar. You're just answering, you know, these different questions. Okay. All right. Also, on Tuesday, guys, we're going to make ice cream. So we'll be sending out directions and ingredients for that for our meeting on Tuesday. Yes, ice cream in the bag. Yep. Okay. And it'll be yummy, too. Yay. Yeah. Yep. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all Monday. Yep. yep. Have a good rest of your week. Bye. Bye.